make sure you put your oil cap back on. What's up everyone? So today we're doing something a little bit different. I don't normally do how-to videos because I think there's enough of them on the internet, but there's a lot of people that maybe don't know how to change their oil. And although it's really simple, quick thing to do, I thought it might be nice to show how to do it specifically on an R56. Um, there'll be a few differences between other minis and obviously on different vehicles it's going to be very different so if you guys do have a different vehicle uh, and you're watching this i'll kind of give you some differences here um, hopefully it'll help you guys too as you guys can see i am using royal purple to do this oil change and it's not necessarily something that you guys have to use uh, it's just something that i like i've had a lot of really good luck with royal purple I do a lot of motorsport stuff and Royal Purple has always been really good for my vehicles. Um, they run smoother, quieter, and in some cases they make more power when you switch from a conventional oil to a synthetic oil just because you have less, uh, I guess, coefficient of friction there. Uh, having less friction, you free up some of the power that you're losing. As you can see, I have already removed my air intake. Uh, I actually have a strep brace that my air, air box mounts to because I have an aftermarket intake that I built for this. But if you do have the stock air box, you don't need to go this far. You do want to at least remove your intake pipe from the air box just because it's gonna be in the way and I'll show you here in a second where it's in the way. Right here, you guys look down in there. Uh, you kind of see it down there. So down in there is where your actual filter is. So this has a canister style filter instead of a spin-on filter like most other vehicles. So the reservoir here is gonna be in the way and so is the air intake tubing. So that all has to come out so that you guys can get to that filter. So I don't normally wear gloves when I'm working on stuff, but I got these gloves for free from Royal Purple for buying the oil. So I might as well use them. So the only thing that's securing your coolant tank in is this 10 millimeter bolt. And then it just kind of sits on a couple slots here. And there's a stud that it kind of sits in a rubber grommet about halfway down. So we'll remove this and we'll pull this out of the way. Now that I've got the intake pipe out of the way and I have removed the coolant reservoir, now you can actually see that canister right there. So I need to go grab a socket and put it on that plastic kind of nut on the housing there and we'll crack that off. So it looks like that is a 27 millimeter socket that I need for that. I've got a big long extension on my ratchet so we can reach down in there. So you're gonna pull your old filter off of there and make sure you recycle it properly. The new filter does come with a new O-ring, so make sure you get this old O-ring off of there. Just take a pick or any small tool. Uh, you could use a little screwdriver if you don't have a pick. Just pull it off with your new o-ring you do want to apply a little bit of oil to it so just take a little bit of new oil and just rub it on the gasket or on the o-ring with your fingers because you want to make sure that when you're torquing this down it doesn't tear the, the o-ring grab your new clean filter place it in the housing and you'll feel it actually snap in where it's lightly held in place. Now you can put it back in. As you guys are tightening this back down, remember that it is plastic, so you don't want to over tighten it and damage it. And kind of a good rule of thumb with, if you don't have a torque wrench, you can take 
two fingers, which it's gonna be a little awkward for me to do based on the where I'm at, but you put two fingers on it to torque it, and that should be enough where you don't have any issues. Ideally, you wanna have a torque wrench and actually torque stuff, but if you don't, it's okay, because I'm not gonna use a torque wrench. I do have one, but I'm not gonna use it. I'll just take rag or paper towel or something just wipe up any areas where you had any oil dripping because you don't want to just leave that there now we can start putting some of this back together before we go down and empty the oil before we go down underneath we do want to loosen this fill cap so we'll take that off so that we don't have to fight any vacuum when the oil is draining. You guys aren't gonna be able to see me, but that's okay, you can see what I'm doing. So we've got the oil pan here. Make sure you don't drain the transmission pan, which is on that side, which if you're in the US or anywhere that's left-hand drive, on the passenger side uh, is the oil pan, on the driver's side is the transmission pan. You do have the plug here, which is an Allen. I don't have an Allen socket the right size. It is an eight millimeter Allen, so it's a pretty good size Allen. And I'm gonna have to probably use a wrench to give me some more torque on this thing. So we'll get it in there, see if we can crack this thing loose. While we're waiting for that to drain, we'll discuss if you guys are changing your oil and you're not changing your oil on a Mini, uh, or really most German cars have a, a canister filter like the one that we did up top. Uh, but if you have another type of vehicle, you'll have a spin-on filter, which generally be somewhere close to the oil pan. And they work a little bit differently they're kind of self-contained instead of being inside that housing up there. So, if you are using a normal uh, or a spin-off filter, spin it off. Make sure you get the gasket. There's an O-ring on it. Make sure you get that off. Just don't leave it on the vehicle because you don't want to put another gasket on top of that. Double gasket and end up with a leak. And then reinstalling, same kind of thing. Put a little bit of oil on that ring on the, uh, the rubber seal. Spin that on and tighten it down by hand. Some manufacturers do put a nut on it like the canister is, but for most of them, you're gonna be doing it by hand. Before we put the plug back in, I wanna show you guys this little copper crush washer on here. It might be kinda of hard to see, I'm not sure. Let's see, I'll get a little closer to you. Little copper crush washer there. So it's recommended you replace that when you're changing your oil. Put a new crush washer on it stick it back in same thing here when you're tightening this down you're really not trying to go crazy with it just make sure it's nice and snug don't over tighten it because you don't want to strip it out wipe it all down make sure you don't leave residue there keep it nice and clean I'm already put oil back in it So I've poured about three and a half quarts of royal purple in there. But before I can start it up, check for leaks, actually get uh, some oil circulating through so I make sure that I actually get it full on the dipstick, I need to put my air intake back together. Because right now we don't have the mass airflow connected. So we've got to get that all back together. Then we can fire it up, see if we have any leaks.
all good. We got no leaks. We got it down off the ramp. We're gonna check that oil level. Check the oil level. We are about a quart low. So I'm gonna add some more. So oil level looks good. We are right at the top of the fill line. So we're all done. So we got everything buttoned up. We got strap brace back on with the mount for our air box. Got the intake tube. Got our connectors connected back up. We got our vent hose for the catch cans all connected. We are all tightened back down and the oil is full. Hopefully that video helps some of you guys with changing your oil on your vehicles. Hopefully you guys are changing oil on a mini, so it's really helpful. But if not, hopefully it helps you guys out a little bit. I'm looking forward to driving the Mini with the Royal Purple in it. The last time the oil was changed was actually done at BMW, and I have no idea what oil they used. So it might have been conventional, might have been synthetic, but at least it has nice oil in it now. So that we know it's really being taken care of while we're beating on it, while doing autocross and whatever other crazy stuff we do with it. If you guys are looking to do some modifications on your Mini, check out the videos I've already made, and there'll be some more videos coming up very soon. So hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and we will see you guys very soon.